Welcome back to week six, Ocean Currents, and in this video, video three, we are going to explore some of the controls on motion in the ocean. So why do ocean currents rotate the way they do? Why do they move from place to place? Um, and what we're going to use for that are use models. Um, and uh, I have a series of pictures we're going to look at kind of going from a very basic um, Earth, non-spinning, no continents, um, and ending with kind of a real-life scenario. Um, so we use these models to help us explain how winds drive currents, how density can drive currents, and how the Earth's rotation and, ba and ocean basin shapes can actually help um, those currents as well. And your textbook goes into to some information on this, and I also posted uh, some links to this information as well. So the first thing we're going to look at, um, so if we looked at the Earth, we've got the equator here, um, and uh, in this case here, the Earth is not rotating, there's no continents. Um, we have basic um, atmospheric circulation, so around the equator, things warm up, um, air rises to the surface, or to the upper air, cools, and eventually sinks at the poles, and then moves across the surface of the Earth back to the equator, heats up, rises again. So we have this overall wind pattern on the ocean. In the northern hemisphere, it goes from north to south. And from in the southern hemisphere, it goes from south to, sorry, south to the equator. So uh, we have this uh, overall wind pattern moving ocean water to the equator and moving it to the equator as well um, with our wind patterns. So we have a simple back and forth pattern. Um, of motion. Now, when we start spinning the Earth, we actually have um, things on the Earth's surface being deflected by what's called the Coriolis effect. So basically the um, area on the Earth closest to the equator is moving much faster than the areas, uh, sorry, moving much slower than the areas um, higher and higher latitudes, moving um, further and further away from the equator, both north and south. And as that happens, things like an airplane is going to get deflected in the northern hemisphere to the right and the southern hemisphere to the left. Um, and you can simulate this on um, a merry-go-round in a playground. And I've got a video posted online for you guys to watch, uh, kind of explaining the Coriolis effect in a pretty neat and interesting way. So Coriolis effect causes these patterns to be deflected slightly. So instead of water moving straight north-south, um, or straight east-west, it gets deflected in the northern hemisphere to the right. So if we were uh, had an ocean current that would uh, be going from the equator to the North Pole, it would be deflected to the right and it would go north, 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 and then kind of diverge a little bit to the east. Um, and that's how everything's going to work in the northern hemisphere. All that stuff's going to get diverted to the east. So when we see those um, ocean currents in the northern hemisphere, they're all rotating in a clockwise direction. Whereas in the southern hemisphere, those currents are rotating counterclockwise. And if I pull up that media again that we looked at earlier, um, and we go back to movement, oops, sorry, we go to surface, and we go to movement, we can see in the northern hemisphere, all of these are moving in a clockwise pattern. Clockwise, clockwise. Southern hemisphere, they're all rotating counterclockwise. And that is all due to this Coriolis effect. Definitely watch that video if you have questions about the Coriolis effect. So the next thing that happens, so we've got this um, atmospheric circulation and Coriolis effect um, create these global wind patterns as well, like the trade winds that can affect some of those surface currents as well. So we've got Earth spinning. Now let's add continents. And what happens when we have those continents, they actually start to deflect these currents. So if we were to look at the Gulf Stream, for instance, we look at um, the North Atlantic. In this case here, this Gulf Stream current is moving from east to west, hits the edge of these continents, and it's diverted 
to the north. So we have what's called a boundary current around the edge of this ocean basin. So we end up producing these gyres. So if we look back here at that media again, we see these boundary currents. The, the ocean current here is deflected and diverted around by these continents. And then it keeps rotating in this counterclockwise clockwise fashion because of the Coriolis effect. And we can see the same thing down here in the South Atlantic, in the South Pacific, and in the North Pacific. We see that the continents actually help to deflect those currents um, from one place to another. So we put kind of walls in our oceans. And then the last part of the story has to do with how things change with depth. And this is called the Ekman Spiral. So we have the winds flowing over the surface of the ocean and the surface currents are actually um, deflected a little bit, 45 degrees, because of the Coriolis effect. Um, so they end up dragging the deeper and deeper water um, at this 45 degree angle um, to the right. Um, so we are in a clockwise motion. So we end up, as we get deeper and deeper into the ocean, the direction of water movement is actually changing. So all of the water, not just the surface, but all the way down to deeper depths is affected by this Coriolis effect. So when that surface water is moving um, at that white surface current arrow, the water right below it is going to be deflected slightly by that Coriolis effect. And it's going to be a little bit slower because we've got all this friction going on, the water's um, uh, moving against each other and slowing itself down. Deeper in, 45 degrees again, 45 degrees, and so on and so forth. And actually when we get deep down to about 100 meters, the water is actually deflected so much that it's moving in the opposite direction as that original wind pattern, which is pretty amazing. So what we end up getting is a spiral, Ekman spiral. So we have this movement pattern moving in the spiral pattern. And this is, uh, would be in the northern hemisphere, this uh, diagram, and I believe the one in your book is as well. Uh, if we were in the southern hemisphere, it would be the opposite way. We would have it deflected to the left, and it would be a, clock, a counterclockwise uh, rotation. So that are the, the, those are the major controls on motion in the oceans. So we've got wind patterns moving the ocean from place to place. We've got the Coriolis effect diverting the water, um, going deeper into the water as well, creating the Ekman spiral. And then we have continents creating boundary currents. They're creating a block uh, uh, to those currents, and the water is then deflected along the edge of those continents. So those are the controls on the motion in the ocean. So that wraps it up for week six, Ocean Currents. I will see you in lab. Make sure you check out some of those links that I posted. They're really cool, um, really interesting, and you can probably find a lot of other neat information on those websites as well. See you later.